Hey guys, this is Drive Geek here, and welcome back to Phoenix Wright, where we are in our first trial portion of this strange trial, honestly. No clue what's going on, but I did realize that the date is October 13th, and the black mail letter was, in fact, for yesterday, which does give us more evidence towards Ron not being our thief, but at the same time, I just, I don't know what's going on behind the scenes. It's just like, I feel like there's so much more that we haven't been made privy to yet, so we'll just have to wait and see, I suppose. Hey, Nick, what is it? Something wrong? Nah, do you see all the people here? It's crazy. Oh, so check out Master Mass's glossy I bought. You like a picture? You bought this? Where? From the little tents in front of the courthouse. They have all sorts of things for sale. You know I'm a sucker for this kind of stuff. Come on, I'm guilty. Throw the book at me. Who's screaming like that? Oh, Mr. Wright, you made it. Yeah, I did, but it doesn't look like things are going to get any less ugly for you. Because I did it, I'm the criminal. Me, me, me. Ugh, he's at it again. I sent the calling cart to Lori Taylor. I admit it. But you don't have the sacred urn, right? Well, that's true, but that doesn't mean I didn't commit the crime. Normally, when I say, of course you didn't, I'm being sarcastic. But you? Yikes. Anyway, I admit that I'm guilty. So make sure they give me a guilty verdict. Please. Oh, there you are, Ronnie. Bonjour, sweetie. Oh, the Desi, honey. But bonjour. Well, actually, I don't really know why I should be speaking French to you at a time like this. Leave it all to me, Ronnie. I swear I'll protect you. Um, uh, well, you see, actually, the thieves are me. Can I tell you something, Nicky boy? I can guarantee that my granny is innocent. If he's declared guilty, I'll be ever so cross with you. So why are you smiling when you say that? So no one will suspect her. Well, if you'll excuse me, I got some errands I need to take care of. I'm counting on you, Nicky boy. Good luck. It wouldn't be Desi, would it? To be honest, I really don't know whether Ron is to mask a mask or not. But there's only one thing I am sure of. He doesn't have the sacred urn right now. Mr. Delight, it's time for you to enter the courtroom. For the time being, I guess I'll have to trust Des Desiree. It well, cause Larry Butts did say that it would take 30 minutes if you flew down the road and Desi does in fact have a thing about flying down the road, but she says she got pulled over by the cops. So if we can find that record, then I won't suspect her for any longer. But right now I'm between at me and Desi now. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Ron Delight. The defense is ready, Your Honor. What about the prosecution? Are you prepared to- What a stupid question. W what did you say? Fine, let me ask you then, Your Honor. Are you ready? Are you ready to pass judgment? I I'm not. I will pass judgment after I hear arguments from both sides. Well, if you're not ready yourself, you shouldn't expect others to be. That's a rule to live by. That sounds really stupid. He can't do his job until after we've presented the evidence. What is wrong with you? Um, who are you? I am Godot. Legendary prosecutor, if never lost a case. Until now. Ah, 
He's the one that Detective Atme was talking about. Yes, your reputation precedes you. What kind of cases have you dealt with so far? Uh, none. Which is why you haven't lost any. You're zero for zero. What did you say? I've never prosecuted a case before. <laughs> never? But you said you've never lost before. Exactly. I've never lost. I've never won before either. Quite arrogant for a beginner, aren't you? Even the mightiest of redwoods begin their lives as mere saplings. Yes, but a mask in a court of law? Ha, don't you know anything? No matter the man, we all wear a mask, either on our faces or over our hearts. I, I get the music that's playing now, but at the same time, this dude's just ridiculous. This guy's the real deal, all right, Nick. Why does it seem like all prosecutors are the real deal? So we finally meet, Mr. Phoenix Trite. N Nick, is he a friend of yours? No, I don't have any friends that call me Trite. Just who is this masked man? He's like, Tuxedo Common. I returned from the depths of hell to do battle with you. Well then, uh, Prosecutor Gobo? It's not Gobo. It's Godo, your honor. In any case, please give your opening statement. Opening statement? Those things are not fit for even dogs to consume. I have only one thing to say before we start. To you, Mr. Trite. What is it? Are you familiar with the saying, a chain is only as strong as its weakest link? I wonder how much you can withstand before you and your case break in two. Uh, what? It's just weird. Um, well then, let's hear from the first witness. Of uh, Gumshoe, of course. Uh, my name is... No one has asked you for your name, witness. Ugh. The important thing is what you know, that's all. Start talking. We're listening. It, yes, sir. Alright, witness. First, let's hear about what you know about the thief that stole the urn. Yes, sir. Master Mask is a master thief that first started his crime spree six months ago. He's so confident that he sends his calling card before he even commits the crime. This was his fifth heist, and as usual, he sent a card on to Lord Taylor. His pattern is to always go after only the most precious art pieces. That's why we're sure it was Master Master. It fits his M.O. to a T. Hmm. So then the actual identity of these Master Mask is... M Mr. Godot, what are you... Where did he get coffee from? But we're in the middle of tri trial here, Mr. Godot. Blacker than this moonless night, hotter and more bitter than hell itself. That is coffee. I'm sure you can grant me at least this much, your honor. Oh, please, proceed. Very well, it's only coffee after all. I think the judge just doesn't know what to do with himself. You can't let you letting him slight this early in the trial. Proceed with your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Well, Nick, what are you going to do? Question everything. As long as they haven't brought up Mr. Delight's identity, all you can do is show that it wasn't Master Mask who stole the urn. I mean, I can see that. Okay. First, let me save it. Oopsie. Oh, no, no, no. I moved too fast. But there we go. Master Mask is a master thief. Have you been involved in the investigation from the beginning? Yep, nobody knows more about the thief than me, pal. It's true. I'm a author on thieves. Okay. An author? He's written books about thieves? Or is that what Zavari means? 
Um, I think you probably meant to say authority. The fact that this guy can slip through even my fingers shows how good he is, pal. It's easy when those fingers happen to be butter fingers. I'm gonna press harder. So nobody knows more about the thief than you, huh? You got it, pal. Except maybe the thief's mom, that is. But isn't there someone who knows even more about him than the police? You don't mean Detective Zari, do you? Hmm. Who's this person? Zari? He sounds German. His name is Luke at me, sir. Guess I shouldn't have made up such a silly name for him. What the heck? I guess he's not all that famous after all. Anyway, it's true that he did manage to retrieve the last item the thief stole. Oh, I see. It seems you're not the expert you claim to be. It looks like the thief is toying with me, even now. So, we lowered Gumshoe's credibility some somewhat. That's good. Have you seen all of these so-called calling cards? Of course I have. Except... Except the person in charge of the treasure exhibit never brought their car to the police. So it might not be him. So I didn't see this one until after the crime occurred. That's because Detective Atme stopped Miss Andrews from taking it to the police. Was the calling card that Lordy Taylor received authentic? Well, all the cards have one common identifying feature. But we're not releasing that information to the general public. But you're absolutely certain that this card is real. Gumshoe can't say it out loud, but he bet he's talking about Mass Damascus emblem. Probably. This is fifth heist, and as usual, sent the card. Does it usually like ten days before? His fifth heist, and your fifth screw up, huh? Objection, pal. That ain't fair. Maybe you could say you screwed up four times, but this last time wasn't my fault. I didn't know about the calling card this time. We of all people shouldn't be chuckling about this detective gumshoe. I just want everyone here in the courtroom to know something. If you ever get a calling card from this guy, don't call some stupid private eye. Call your local police right away. You got me? Wow, looks like he really got it in for detective at me. But I actually thought he was an actual detective, not like a PI. This pattern is always to go after the only the most precious art pieces. Art pieces, like what, for example? Well, his first target was the famous Tear of Eminon. What's that? Some kind of especially salty teardrop? It, no, sir. It's a blue diamond. A single, rare diamond. Next was the crown of Bangora. You know, the thing you put on your head. After that was the left hand of Hades. Wait, isn't that the hand that Atme's rings on? I think so. Quite possibly. And then was the portrait of Magina, sir. Detective Atme retrieved the portrait of Magina and returned it to the museum. And the target of his fifth and last robbery was the sacred urn, right? But isn't it difficult for him to dispose of such famous art pieces? Well, we assume he must have some underworld connections. Somehow, Mr. Light doesn't look the type. Yeah, he's a little too sunny to be hanging out in the underworld. Agreed. That's why we're sure it was Master Mask, sir. It fits his MO to a T. What do you mean when you say, it fits his MO to a T? I was thinking of asking the same thing myself. Uh, I wish you would listen a little more closely, pal. First of all, there's the calling card. We're 100% certain it's authentic. Then there's the fact that he seems to know about all the security system, about the security system. And finally, his target was an art piece. These are all part of the thief's modus operandi. And so, since this robbery seems to fit all those conditions, that's right, it means that Mass Damask is behind it. Nick, it definitely looks like it was Mass Damask who stole the urn. There's no real evidence either way as to whether Ron Delight is Mass Damask. But, but... Also, the urn hasn't turned up yet, let alone in connection to Mr. Delight himself. So even though we know it was Mass to Mass that did it, maybe for the time being I should try to show it wasn't Mass to Mass that did it. Okay. Let's see. The exhibit. 
founder of the technique has no monetary value. But at the same time, at me would also know. How can I prove that that is not him? Well, that's before one. Or was it around? What around one? Okay, don't bring up at me, I suppose. Okay, he has an emblem on his hat and in the middle of his chest. I don't remember saying that. Yeah, he doesn't have the emblem in the middle of his chest. It's not mask a mask. Okay. So confident. Sends a calling card. So it's his fifth high sign as usual. He sent a card. And that's why your show was mask a mask. Well, Adrian said the urn was useless, so. I think that's what we have to do. Can I ask you a little something, Detective Gumshoe? Just hearing a little in that question is making me nervous. You said that he always goes for the most precious art pieces, right? That's right, pal. But there's one problem. That's not what he did in this case. The supposedly priceless urn doesn't exactly rise to the level of precious art. But what do you mean? But Nick, how can you say such a terrible thing? No, I meant from a financial point of view. I mean, it wouldn't fetch a good price. Well, Prosecutor de Godot, what is the value of that urn? The appraisers I spoke to said they couldn't attach a price to it. And I mean that in the worst sense. So in other words, it was not the kind of item that mask to mask would normally go after. Oh. I also know it's not him, because that's not his... He's not wearing a full outfit. Hmm, if I understand you correctly, Mr. Wright, you're saying that the theft of the sacred urn was not the work of mask to mask? Y yes, that's what I'm saying. Actually, all I did was point out the contradiction. The argument made itself, but... Well, first of all, we need to get this issue cleared up. Was the last robbery the work of mask to mask or not? What do you have to say about this, Mr. Goodell? This coffee here. It's my own special blend. I call it Godot 107. I'm trying to decide whether to cut down on the acidity or the bitterness. That's the only thing I've got on my mind right now, Mr. Trite. What? If you're really a man, you should clean up your own mess. No, this is a mess you have to fix, dude. That's this prosecution. Um, sorry, but I don't get what you mean. If you're saying it wasn't Mask to Mask that stole the urn, then it must be someone imitating Mask to Mask as methods. A fake. A fake Mask to Mask? Fake to Mask? That sounds so ridiculous. But I like it. Now, before I decide on my coffee, I believe some proof is in order, Mr. Trite. Proof that the person who peered at Lovie Taylor was that night was actually a fake. Hmm. Though I don't approve of Mr. Godot's behavior, his point is valid. Mr. Wright, we're waiting. Looks like I'm going to have to prove it. I need proof that the person at Lori Taylor that night was the fact the fake Damask. This camera photo versus the publicity photo? It's one of them. The proof is right here. This looks like a photo taken by a security camera. But if you look closely, you'll notice something peculiar about it. Ha. Huh. Well then, why don't you go ahead and show us what that is? Go on, use this pointer and show us what about this picture is peculiar. The fact that he doesn't have the 
gigantic emblem in the middle. It's right here, of course. You mean masked mask? I have here a piece of reference I would like the court to take a look at. Isn't that the publicity photo I bought this morning? Exactly. The problem I have with the security camera photo is the brooch on Damascus' chest. A breach? Here, bailiff, get my steed. We need to retreat at once. A brooch, your honor. It's sort of a clasp for holding one's cape on. A clasp, eh? Ah, I see now. But Master Mask in the security camera photo. Ah, he has no brooch. The brooch is the same as the emblem on Damascus' calling card and serves as his symbol. But the thief that broke into Lori Taylor wasn't wearing a brooch. In other words, this Master Mask is a fake. I've been fooled again. Sorry, Gumshoe. Uh, order. It's true. Undeniably true. Detective Gumshoe, how how could you have overlooked this? Uh, I'm sorry, sir. I don't know how I... Well, to be fair, he didn't have the photo. At me gave it to us. Hey, now. If you're going to have a pity party, invite me too. M Mr. Godot, you deserve some blame in this too. How could you have overlooked such a large brooch? Huh. The brooch you're talking about? Do you mean this? Ah. That's Master Maps' brooch. But where did you find it? Well, I've always had a good nose for evidence. I got it at the crime scene. It was hidden in the shadow of a big female Buddha, Buddha statue. Buddha statue? It must mean the Ami Fei statue. But why didn't you tell me about that, sir? I always put evidence away in my pocket. After all, it's the safest place for crucial evidence. Ugh, that guy is one cool customer. Is he? It's a little early to be shaken up, isn't it, little lady? That friend of yours left pretty little hickeys on there, too. H hickeys? Figuratively speaking, of course. I'm referring to Ron Delight's fingerprints. Well, he finally brought his identity up. What? What? The defendant's fingerprints are on the broom? Order. Order in the court. Mr. Godot, let's see that brooch. I've grown attached to my metallic girlfriend here. Take good care of her. Hmm. She, I mean, it appears to have been torn off some clothing. There's a little bit of cloth left on the back. Which means that I didn't see any ripped clothing. There must have been a struggle. Uh-oh, Phoenix, you have a problem. Ha, you mess with Godot. What, do we get the horns? And you get burned. He's been playing me like a violin. Well, Judge, I'm about ready to call my next witness. Huh? You're done with me? But I haven't proved anything yet. You've proven your own incompetence. That's good enough. That doesn't sound good at all. Bailiff, bring the next witness into the courtroom. Finally time for the ace detective to make his appearance, huh? I could have expected him to be along much earlier. But I guess the police have to make their case. One second is one drip of the coffee pot. Let's hurry it up. Shh, silence. Hee 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 hee. Now I see. It's all becoming clear. W what's clear? Zari. The truth has once again been elegantly revealed to me. What we have here is a judge and a prosecutor. A coffee maniac at that. Am I correct? Well, yes, that's right. Ha, not bad. Not bad at all. You're the first person that's ever been able to penetrate my secret veil. You won't stop talking about coffee. It's not that hard to figure out that you're a coffee maniac. Well, sir, prosecutor, let me introduce myself. Unless he's being sarcastic. I'm kind of hoping Ado was being sarcastic. 
My name is Luke Atme, ace detective and rising star illuminating the heavens. Boy, these two make the perfect pair. They either be best friends or they tear each other's heads off. I've heard that on the night of the crime, you were all alone on security detail. You have heard correctly. My specially made monocle is worth more than a hundred detective gumshoes. If detective gumshoe was worth anything, that is. Hmm. Why was this guy all by himself anyway? There must be some reason, I'm sure of it. Well then, tell us what this special monocle of yours witnessed. It was approximately one o'clock in the morning, just after the date changed. That's when my nemesis, the infamous Master Mask, dancingly descended upon me. Just as I began to turn, the coward struck a fierce blow upon my noble head. Darkness swallowed me before I could land a single strike. When I awoke, he was gone. Thirty minutes later, I used an emergency phone to notify the police. Wait, does that mean you woke up and then waited thirty minutes? Or it was thirty minutes between you passing out and waking up? So you didn't get a clear look at the criminal? My specially made monocle never misses a thing. However, that is limited to things that fall within my own visual range. But of course, that's only natural. I fail to see why the witness seems so proud of his performance that evening. Well, Sir Old Timer, let me explain. We are not speaking of any ordinary thief, but of the King of Thieves, the Great Master Mask, my arch enemy. That is why my instincts and my years of experience tell me. Hmm, very well. Proceed with cross-examination, Mr. Wright. The judge himself seems tired of this entire thing, and I don't blame him at all. It was approximately one... So that would be 1 o'clock in the morning of the 12th, correct? That's an impressive deduction, sir lawyer. You were on security duty that night. Where exactly were you at the time? A penetrating question. I was in the basement warehouse near the computer. Near the computer, huh? So then you weren't trying to remain hidden, I take it. Up to this point, I have tried to remain concealed while waiting for the thief. Yeah, he said the same thing yesterday, too. Gumshoe also said they never spotted the thief at the crime scene before. Precisely. That is precisely why I chose not to hide last night. I knew that by not concealing myself, I would be putting pressure on the thief. Looks like the thief is the one applying pressure. And you're pinging me head, that is. In any case... That's when my nemesis, the inf infamous Master Mask, dancingly descended upon me. Dancingly descended? From where exactly? Well, from the entrance, I suppose. Where else? So in actuality, he neither danced nor descended. Someone please save me. Um, so how is it that you didn't notice the thief? My eyes were looking for the thief's shadow while my ears listened for his footfalls. But even so, the dastardly criminal managed to sneak up on me. It can only be due to his subtly camouflaged cape. His camouflage cape, sure, and soft-soled shoes. I hereby dub you Ace Dunce. Agreed. Just as I began to turn, the coward struck a fierce blow behind my noble head. You didn't see the criminal's face when that happened? Well, that's the difficult part. How should I put it? I saw his mask. That's all I can recall. Hmm, that's not very solid as far as testimony goes. However... Fortunately, I had a th my third monocle, the security camera, at the ready. Yeah, we already proved that was false. I captured his image perfectly. This I should be sufficient, I believe. Hmm, well, as long as this photo is authentic, I don't see a problem here. Well, Mr. Cadeau, do you have a problem with the photo? Good, then let's continue with the testimony. 
Darkness swallowed me before I could land a single strike. When I awoke, he was gone. Attacked and knocked unconscious, and you weren't able to do a thing? That's certainly some very impressive tough work. <laughs> well, sir lawyer. Have you ever been suddenly struck on the head? Huh? Well, actually, yes. By a fire extinguisher. And what happened? I was knocked out. And you lost your memory, too. You see, you have no right to look down on me, then, do you? The only reason I don't lose my memory is because I have more brains to begin with. You may have brains, but the wiring to the self-reflection part seems to be severed. In any case, that was how I was knocked senselessly. And then... 30 minutes later, I used an emergency phone to notify the police. About this 30 minutes. My silver cord was loosened and my soul fled to the golden halls of Elysium. Isn't that heaven and Norris mythology, I want to say? I'm not too sure, though. Someone would have to correct me. As usually, I have no idea what this guy is saying. I think he's saying that he was out cold. So, what happened during these 30 minutes? No one can say, Your Honor. The span of time has truly vanished into the other. Just what is he going on about? There's something suspicious about Detective at me. How could he not have noticed when the thief came in? Also, he says he was knocked unconscious before he could fight back. But that can't be right. It contradicts the evidence. Huh? Which piece? The real question is, why would he sell such an obvious lie? So obvious, I haven't figured it out. Okay, let me look at the evidence. Was moved. No monetary value. The card went off around 8, 8, 1 a.m. Storeroom camera. Wait, is this the person leaving? It's them leaving, not going in. So my nemesis infinite mess centered upon me. Um. Here's Okay, my problem with everything is that the only camera thing is that, um, the only camera footage is him showing he left, not going in. So, that has to be it, right? Or not. Okay, um... No, it didn't. That's for my nemesis. Can I ask him further questions? Um... How is this that you didn't notice the thief? Even so... I can only be due... To his camouflage cape. He said he was looking at the. Like, none of this makes any sense. But. Also. I wouldn't call green camouflage. Oh, let's see. Found from museum the black reality. Hmm. Like the swallow of me before I can land a single strike.
Is it the fact that there's... No, I don't, I don't think so either. I don't... Am I... I think I'm missing something. That's what it is. Um... Wait, when was the police called? Um... I forget when the police were called. Um... Over the end of the turn, the coward struck a fierce blow upon my head. It was approximately. I mean, yeah, it was one. I think I'm missing something, but I'm not. I'm on the right track, I'm just not sure what piece of evidence I need to, like, defini definitively say what it was. Oh my gosh, I did not mean to do that. Okay, he's saying that... He should not have been able to turn if he was hit sorely in the back of the head, right? Is that what it is? If not, I'm gonna have to look. I don't... I don't know. No, okay. I will, I will be right back so I can figure this out. Okay, I did figure it out. Um, I did use help from the walkthrough because I was just... I thought like all the mess would have been proof that there was a fight, but what, was actu what we were actually going for was this um, brooch being ripped showing that there was a struggle somehow. But I mean, there, there was other things showing a struggle, I believe. Mr. Atme, could you take a look at this with that special monocle of yours? Aha, this belongs to the criminal mastermind, my arch nemesis, Master Mask. It is, in point of fact, Master Mask's brooch. It was found on the floor of the basement warehouse. I wonder how that happened. My thing is, is it inside or outside? Huh. Elementary, my dear lawyer. Obviously, it wasn't glued on well enough. Not quite. It clearly shows signs of having been ripped off a piece of clothing. Ripped off? Ah. You can only deduce that this thief struggled with someone that night. That's the only thing I can think of. And there's only one person that was in a position to have struggled. A struggle with a thief. The only person that was on security duty that night. You, Detective Atney. Er. Detective Atney, you must have fought with the thief that night. There's also paint everywhere, I suppose. So, why did you lie in your testimony to the court? 
Witness giving false testament. Testimony is a serious crime. Or I no. W wait just a moment, sir, old timer. Don't talk to me like I'm living in a nursing home. He 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 he. I just remembered, Your Honor. I was just confused because I've been detailing with so many cases lately. The true measure of a man is the amount of work he does. That's what I always say. Then you've done nothing, as this is your first case. Nick, you can only handle one case at a time, isn't that right? You talk too much. Witness, so are you now saying that you and the thief fought? Hold on. That's quite enough, Your Honor. I excuse me? Say the big questions for the testimony. That's one of my rules. Indeed, I understand. I, Luke Atney, completely agree. This is really weird. I'm not getting like a true sense of the di dynamic of Godot. And it's like kind of weirding me out. Cause like with Edgeworth, there was like, even before we quote unquote remembered his story, there was still a clear tension between the two of us then like that tension was already very much present with Francisca and I'm just not it kind of feels like the dough is not really here like isn't present in the moment if that makes sense indeed it's true that I looked away from the door for a brief moment however Luke at me cannot be so easily discombobulated. Fortunately, the thief grabbed a weapon from the side and rendered me useless. A true gentleman fights only with his fists, but they were not enough. His first blow struck true. Bam. And that's all she wrote. Then how did you rip it off if you were instantly out? So in the end, did you catch a glimpse of Mask to Mask? Correct. It was during his third crime that he struck me from behind. Wait, what? It seems that my memory has become a tad jumbled, so to speak. Hmm, well that's certainly understandable. I myself always get confused about which testimony goes with which case. Th that can't be good. Yeah, that's... That's real suspicious, Judge. Maybe you should sit... Sit out for a while. Alright. Do you think it's true? So why did you look away from the door anyway? In addition to the camera, I have prepared a variety of other sensors as well. Interesting. The alarm on one of those had gone off, so I had to check the data. That's why I went to the computer. Elegantly, of course. So you were momentarily vulnerable when you were working on the computer. Yes, ask more questions. What kind of sensors are you talking about? There are other places in the basement that someone could enter and exit from. There are air conditioner ducts, sewer pipes, and a cat door. I hooked up heating detecting, infrared, and ultraviolet sensors to each of them. And that's a lot of hardware. Was it all yours? Lordy Taylor Department Store was kind enough to provide the monitoring hardware. Naturally, the security camera that took the photo belongs to them as well. In other words, he couldn't have rid of the equipment, huh? Hee 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 hee. Has that cleared up any doubts you have about me, sir lawyer? Not really. I want to ask about the computer. Let's continue. Let's ask about the computer. So did the computer belong to Lord Lordy Taylor as well? Correct. Well, except for the program that manages the data. That was specially designed by me, Luke Atney. In that case, he could have easily manipulated the data. He 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 he. What's wrong, sir lawyer? However, I can't be discombobulated. Um, what does that mean? Discombobulated? Hmm. Young people these days, they really irritate me. 
We allow perfectly good old words to die until everyone forgets what they mean. Sorry, but what exactly does it mean anyway? Now I've forgotten. What was I saying? Jeez, it's better than old people who forget what they were saying five seconds ago. Are we going to go over the definition? Well, looks like we've cleared that up. You can go on with your testimony. Unfortunately, the thief grabbed a weapon from the side and rendered me senseless. What do you mean by weapon from the side? Naturally, the thief had no idea that I, Luke at me, was hiding in the area. Wait, you just said you weren't hiding. He grabbed the sword from the statue that was standing by the door to the warehouse. Sword. You mean the sword that was all twisted like a tree branch? Correct. Fortunately for me, the blade was not sharp. Okay, so he is talking about this is the people. So the thief armed himself with a sword, and what about yourself, witness? A true gentleman only fights with his hands, but they weren't enough. You had that much faith in your own fighting abilities? But of course, in college, I was the second in charge of the boxing club. I'm sorry if I failed to find that appropriately impressive. However, my opponent in the ring this time was my arch nemesis, Mask to Mask. This guy's really a piece of work. His first blow struck true, and that's all that she wrote. Wait, hey, wasn't he hit in the back of the hand? Can you tell us, head, um, can you tell us a bit more about what happened? My opponent was both powerful and vicious. You might say he was power vicious? I assumed the at me fighting stance, but a sudden flash of light blinded me. That, of course, was checkmate. My opponent had bested me. What do I do now? Should I ask more about this? Yes. You were blinded? So what was this flash of light that blinded you? I was bathed in the golden light. That seemed to come from the statue of the woman. The statue of Ami Fei, I'm guessing. Well, that wasn't very much help at all. And what do you think, Nick? Well, there's one thing that I'm absolutely sure of now. Yeah, what is it? This Luke at me guy. He's definitely hiding something. But why? I think I'm starting to figure out what really happened that night. And absolutely the true nature of this detective. Okay. Camera data. A blow to the back of the head. Fortunately, the thief grabbed a weapon. His first blow struck true. Okay, this is making it sound like he wasn't. This was making it sound like he was actually fighting, but that's not possible. What is this at me fighting style? I'm sorry, but that's a trait secret and I really can't say anymore, but... I suppose I can tell you if I absolutely must. The main thing is to put your back to the wall. That way no one can get behind you. That's it. That's the at me fighting style? Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, what about that testimony? It was very important. Of course it's important. You've learned a detective's secret technique after all. Yes, indeed. I'll remember to make use of it if I ter ever take a walk alone late at night. Now then, witness. Will you go ahead and add that secret information to your official testimony? Okay, that's exactly what I needed. Okay, how... If you were hit up the back of the head, then you weren't doing jack squat. Detective at me, your testimony is crumbling like a house of cards. What fun that this is, sir lawyer. It is truly a pleasure to cross swords with you. And now, once again, you have thrown down the gauntlet at my armored feet. I believe this is what you said yesterday. 
No, the coward must have wormed his way in through somewhere besides the door. Then my arch nemesis struck me on the head from behind with this gruesome item here. From behind, huh? But just now you testified that he struck you on the forehead. I hardly think you could forget where you were hit on the head. Ugh. It seems I I've made another mistake. Detective Atney, that's not the only strange part of your testimony. What do you mean by that? For example, the very fact that you hit the calling card from the police itself is strange. It's almost as if you were afraid they were going to help with security. Ugh. Geniuses such as myself have always been misunderstood. How sad. That's wrong. Okay, he has a very deep and nice objection. I really enjoy that. To err is human, to forgive divine. Okay, humans aren't machines, they have souls, feelings. They live, they die, they love, they hate. And yes, they even make mistakes. Okay, that was okay. Hey, hold on. It's not as pretty as that. Okay, that coffee looks nasty. It was like gray. Really? What is it like then? Always chase a riddle down to the end. That's one of my rules. This is it. This might just be my chance to turn things around. Mr. Wright, what exactly is that you're asserting? Very well, Your Honor. The defense asserts that... Could it be that he's a fake? Or am I asserting that he's the culprit? I mean, I personally think that But I think I have more evidence that he's a fake than anything. This witness isn't Luke at me. He's a... F Wait. An ace detective couldn't be as forgetful as this guy. Imposters like you are often suspicious of others as well. Really? Okay, I, th I thought he meant that as in... He's... I didn't think that meant Mr. Atme's not who he is. The truth is, this witness is no ace detective at all. So then what exactly are you saying that I am? Uh, um, well, an average detective. Really? Okay, no. I'm just gonna go ahead and go with the last one. Um, yeah. Okay, it's like... I mean, I truly think he's mass to mass, but I don't think I have enough evidence to say that. The answer is simple. It's all clear to me now. Detective Lou Atme's true identity is actually mass to mass. Hello. <laughs> Order. Order in the court. Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? There are too many unnatural parts to Mr. Atme's story. He says he was hiding at the crime scene, which is why no one ever saw him there. And then, in this last case, he manages to outperform Detective Gumshoe and the entire police force to miraculously retrieve the stolen treasure. That's because I analyzed the crime scene data and made an exquisitely elegant deduction. I picked up clues that the police overlooked in order to arrive at a... Oh, please. The explanation is far simpler than that detective at me. The truth is that you are, in fact, mask to mask. But, Mr. Wright, this photo, it clearly shows mask to mask. The security camera belongs to Lordy Taylor Department Store. He shouldn't have been able to manipulate it. He didn't need to manipulate it, just the data. He gained access to the warehouse under pre pretense of providing security. Then he simply dressed up as the thief and stole the urn. So the ace detective is actually an ace thief? Is this true, witness? Aha. Uh -huh. 
Damas's MO is pure genius, and so am I, Luke at me, ace detective. You're very clear what you have come to such a conclusion. I am impressed, sir lawyer. What? Witness, you, you're admitting it? Nick, now's your chance. Yes, time to put the last nail in this guy's coffin. Detective at me, when you assume the thief's identity. Okay, thank you. Cause, oh, that looks like real coffee now. Good old blend 102, my personal favorite. How are you getting different blends in the, co in the courtroom? Mr. Godot, the ace detective is actually an ace thief. I smell a best-selling novel. There's only one problem. It simply isn't true. But, Mr. Godot, Mr. Wright has made some very strong points, and I... I'll admit my opponent has woven a compelling narrative out of a whole claw. But it is, in fact, nothing more than a patchwork quilt, Mr. Trite. If this detective really is a thief, then show us some the proof of your claim. But it ha better be as hot and as perfect as the coffee dripping down your face. Well, Mr. Wright, don't just stand there. This court would like to see this decisive proof you have. Quickly. Uh... Oh, yes, of course. Oh, what's the big rush? Are you alright, Nick? That me looks pretty rattled right now. I'd like to finish this right now if I can, but can I really do it? I don't think so. That's why I didn't choose... Um... I didn't choose the option of at me is the detective. The decisive evidence that proves Mr. Atme is in fact has yet to be found. Proof? Of course I, I, I've got nothing. It's what I thought. Man has to hold his head high no matter how bad things get after all. I see. I thought perhaps you had the, some evidence to back up your assertion. You gotta stay on the attack. Don't give up, think harder, and try again. But are you just gonna give up and lose this? So you come to your senses, have you, sir lawyer? Uh, can't think of a counterattack at all. Seems the cloud of suspicion surrounding the witness has lifted. Mr. Godot, if you have anything further. Is this M Maya? <laughs> or Pearly? <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Who are you? That doesn't really matter right now, does it? Miss Delight, what are you doing here? Nikki boy, the thing you've been looking for. I th think I found it. You mean that bag? No, not the bag. What's in the bag? Well, wait, that says Ami, not I am. Is that the sacred urn? Nick, is the urn. In the bag? I thought there would have been money in it. Order, order, order. You, madame? That urn, where did you find it? You'll never believe it. It was in the office of Mr. Fancy Pants, ace detective. Blew at me. Oh, Desi, you're the best. Has pink splotches all over it. Probably trying to fix it correctly. Well, how do you explain that one, Mr. Atme? Even you are going to have a hard time weaseling out of this one. Ha. Pathetic. Mr. Godot, do you have something you wish to say? Yes, Your Honor. It simply amazes me how quickly times change. In the old days, a man was to be taken at his word. It's truly sad. Dude, this is your first day. How are you going in the old days? You're still denying that Mr. Atme was involved? Before casting aspirations, aspersions, a detective at me, consider a young lady here. Your name is Desiree. Desiree Delight. Is that correct? Y yes. What about it? You could have set this up for your husband. That's the obvious conclusion. Ha. Huh. How charming. The lengths that a woman is willing to go to say her husband is truly inspiring. What are you insinuating? As the wife of the criminal, you could have discovered that stolen urn anywhere. Again, that coffee looks nasty. Including the office of the detec good detective here. That is true. 
you don't have proof that she didn't tamper with it. So you found the urn. What does that prove? Certainly doesn't prove where the urn was before you found it. Maybe the pink stuff matches um, the things that were in his chemistry set, I'm thinking. What? I just brought it here from the detective's office. Please, madam. This town is already filled to the brim with lies. Any more would only compound the tragedy we have been witness to. You're wrong. I would never. I would never do such a thing. Miss Delight, please, Nikki boy, you gotta help me talk some sense into these people. There must be some way. Gotta prove that Ern was actually in the Atme Detective Agency. You can test like we saw that bag. What's wrong? Is it your job to come up with something to say? Nick, come on, it should be easy to prove. After all, we checked out the bag, didn't we? You're right, I remember doing that. Whatever was in there was hard and round, and smooth too. Yes, it must have been the urn. It must have. But I never actually saw it with my own eyes. But we saw the bag, right? At me walked in just when I was about to have a look at it. So even if it was the urn there, I can't testify that it was. You're right. Ha. Huh. It looks like I was wrong about you, Mr. Trite. In this town overflowing with lies, there's still a single flickering candle of truth. Nikki boy. Well, it's true that I never actually saw the urn. Maybe I can still testify it about it from another angle. What about it, Mr. Wright? Have you given up yet? There must be some way. I've got to prove that urn was actually a detective at me. Um, maybe fingerprints? I can prove where the urn was by the fingerprints on it. Fingerprints? Oh, come now. Where's gloves? Now you're making me laugh. May I go on? Got it now. It would be perfectly understandable if my fingerprints were on the urn. After all, it was I who was guarding the urn in the first place. In any case, I was always in the habit of wearing gloves, as you can see. Yeah. So unfortunately, my fingerprints wouldn't be evidence of anything. What about it, Mr. Wright? I've come too far to back now. In there, I'm sure someone must have left fingerprints on it. The defense person is that the fingerprints of this person should be... The defense person is that the fingerprints... Um... I know that she cleaned it. She did tell us that. Is that what they're trying to do? Let me give you an important piece of advice. The one who keeps a cool head all the way until the game's end is the winner. Let me give you an even more important piece of advice, Mr. Wright. You're not going to win this game with that answer. Okay, that wasn't it. Wow, even the judge is making cool snappy remarks now. Hmm, the urn was put in the bag and carried to the detective's office yesterday. That means the person I should be fingering is the person who left their prints on the urn yesterday at at me detective agency. Wait, Pearly? Carried to the detective's office yesterday. That means the person I should be fingering is the person who left their prints on the urn yesterday at At Me Detective Agency. Wait, would it be me? I'm just going to keep guessing. 
because he stopped you before, right? So what's all this fuss about fingerprints, anyway? Mr. Atme, do you recall the events of yesterday? Hey, Nick, come on, open it up. Hey, wait a minute. You can't just open his private property. Don't be such a fuddy-duddy. This is an important investigation. Well, what's in there? But hang on a second, I'm taking it out now. Whatever it is, it feels kind of hard and smooth. Well, hello there. It's true that I didn't get a chance to look in the bag at that time, but I did touch what was inside. W what? You, you touched it? And I remember it very well. It was smooth and hard. Well, er, th that was just... Your Honor, I like the court to examine the fingerprints on that urn. My fingerprints are on there. Then it proves that the urn was in Detective Atme's office. Well, even if your fingerprints are on the urn, this still doesn't prove when they were put there, does it? Of course it does. But what did you say? That's not what I say, but what Adrian Andrews, the person in charge of the exhibition, said. I polished it until it was just about glowing. Thought maybe could make it look more valuable. Okay, that's where it was with Adrian, at least if somewhere close. If she polished it that much, she must have removed any and all fingerprints on it. And the only chance I had to get my fingerprints on it after that was yesterday. At the Atme Detective Agency. Ha. Huh. This blend. Goldo Blend 107. I thought you had 102. And then you had 107. How are you getting these different blends? I've decided. It's a little too bitter after all. Oh, he's decided that. Order, order, order. I accept the defense's request. Bailiff, take this urn and... Wait. A moment, your honor. There's no need for that. There's no need, you say? Precisely. I already know Mr. Wright's fingerprints are on the urn. <clears throat> what are you saying? Yes, I've finally broken him down. I don't think so. Um, take a good look, everyone. Unable to find a rival worthy of my genius, I was forced to create one by myself. Here I am, the tragic clown. This guy is nattier than a fruitcake. You see, it was me all along. I am the one and only master mask. Ha ha, I hope you all enjoyed my little performance. Then where's the other three items? He he he, ha ha ha. There's more to this, there has to be. Because I do not think it was would be that easy, unless he's also being coerced into saying nothing. Well, Mr. Godot, what's Mr. Atme's condition? He's still in the lobby, laughing insanely, Your Honor. I wish I could enjoy the joke as much as he seems to be. Well, it looks like the matter has been settled. I came very close to besmirching the record of an innocent young man, besmirching him with the title of thief. Nick, you were right after all. Yeah, I guess Mr. Delight really was the thief. The court finds the defendant, Mr. Ron Delight. You're wrong. Wrong, I tell you. Er, um, I mean, not exactly wrong so much as but not exactly right as to what you are really trying to say. Oh no, he's not. This can't be happening. The thief, the sneaky, odious thief who's been stealing all the treasures. It's me. I'm him. I'm the one you want. I'm the thief, I tell you. So do it. Pronounce me guilty, please. <clears throat> I don't know what kind of kangaroo court you all think this is, but... The true identity of the thief has already been proven. Please hurry and pass, judge. What are you talking about? I already confessed. I'm the thief, I tell you. Mr. Godot, don't stand there drinking coffee. Ha. Huh? Hey there, Mr. Thief. Y yes yes sir? If you're really a man, then clean up your own mess. 
I I'm sorry. I'm afraid I just don't have any idea what you mean. If you are mask to mask, then prove it. That's what it means. Y yes, sir. I'll be happy to. He says he'll be happy to, Nick. Kind of cute. He's 100% committed to his fantasy. Good boy. Just remember one thing. A boy only gets one chance in this life to become a man. I, I know that. I, I won't fail, I swear. Okay then, talk. We're all listening. Oh well. Let's all have a listen to this confession. Okay, I honestly thought we were done. Interesting. The truth is, I've been masked to mask all along. I mean, you can't prove that I'm not masked to mask, can you? I don't have an alibi for the night the urn was stolen, after all. I donned my costume that night and dancingly descended upon the scene of the crime. Look, you can see right there in the photo, it's me. No, we can't. As for my brooch, I snagged it on the door handle and it got torn off. That's all. Hmm. I don't like the direction this trial has taken. But this is how every trial goes, at least with me anyway. Well, we have an alibi for you. Ha, huh. you're doing great. You're doing great, sweetie. Hee hee hee, stop it, Mr. Godot. You're embarrassing me. Like I said, you're only going to get one chance to testify, alright? But if you make it through this with flying colors, I'll keep my promise too. I'll make sure you stay locked up in prison as the one and only true mask to mask. Thanks so much, Mr. Godot. I'll, I'll do my best. Alright, Mr. Wright, it's time for the cross-examination. Alright. Um, oh my gosh. I was like waiting to... Um, save it. And I'm just like, oops. Okay, let's save it here. Um, you can't prove I'm not. I don't have an alibi. You've got no alibi? I've been a judge for a long time. This is the first time I've ever heard a defendant brag about having no alibi. But I tell you I was at Lordy Taylor that night. Er, no. That's too vague, even for me. To be more precise, I was down in the basement warehouse. Hold on. What is it, Nick? Where was Ron Delight when the crime happened anyways? We can prove you had an alibi after all. This case will be a piece of cake. Well, you're right, but ha. Think you can prove that? Wake up and spill the coffee. Well, I think maybe I can. Straight, do you have any evidence that shows the defendant has an alibi? His wallet. I have the evidence, or do you think I'm still some kind of third-rate rookie? I, I really do. Oh, I've never seen you this angry before. I'm not surprised. Anger is the last refuge of the pathetic. I thought I was more confident than angry. Well then, let's see this evidence already. Show this court evidence that proves where your client was the night of the crime. The wallet. Mr. Delight, this wallet belongs to you, correct? Ah, y yes, it does. I, I had lost it somewhere. Mr. Wright, when did you find a wallet? You should report it to the police right away. Uh, no, you don't understand. This is an important piece of evidence. Evidence? Mr. Delight, when did you first notice that you lost your wallet? Er, let's see. I think it was on the night of the crime. But I don't- But I know I still had it when Desi and I went out for dinner. This wallet was found at approximately 1am at KB Security Headquarters. What? Surely you're not serious. Yes, I am serious. This proves that Mr. Delight was in fact at KB Security that night. Does he want to be like more exciting for Desi? That's like the only thing that makes sense to me. As to why he's claiming he committed these crimes. If, so if the defendant was at KB Security at 1 o'clock in the morning, and that proves that he has a watertight alibi. No. Furthermore, considering the distance between Lori Taylor and KV Security, it would have taken 30 minutes to get there by car, according to Larry anyway. Well, Mr. Godot, do you have anything to say? And stop drinking that coffee. Come on, Mr. Thief. Don't let this guy beat you. Tell him why he's wrong. 
You're the only one who calls me thief, Mr. Goodell. Alright, I'll try. I'll do it. I will. It's really got delight. Mr. Delight all worked up. Yeah, he's like a kid at his first day of school. Look, it's just ridiculous. Why would I have dropped my wallet at KB Security? Someone must have planted it there to make it look like I was there, not at the heist. Planted it there? It's really reaching now. Mr. Delight, you probably dropped your wallet when you took it out to use this, didn't you? The key card to KB Security's CEO's office? No? Ha, huh, that was a pretty good try, Mr. Trite. Unfortunately, you've overlooked one small thing. But what? Motive, of course. Why would this thief go to KB Security in the middle of the night anyway? Because he works there. Hmm, well, Mr. Wright, it looks like you need some more evidence after all. About the stupid kid. Now then, let's see your evidence. The evidence that shows why Mr. Light went to KB. Um, the blackmail. Mr. Delight, I believe you've seen this before, correct? Uh, th that's... what is it? A blackmail letter? That's what it looks like from the contents. But blackmail? Yes, basically it says bring $50,000. Hmm, that certainly sounds like blackmail, alright. At the time of the theft, Mr. Light was dealing with a blackmailer himself in KB Security's CEO office. A full half an hour away from the scene of the crime. Ugh. Um, don't hurt yourself, dude. Order, order, order. So when the theft of the urn occurred, the defendant was at KB security. Looks like a perfect case for the defense. Objection. You may see it as the perfect case, Judge, but to me... Well, let's just say that my Godot Blend 107 impresses me a lot more. What are you trying to say? You say the thief was being blackmailed by the CEO of a security company? I think he is the CEO. But did you actually investigate the CEO at all? Huh? Well, um, no. I guess not. Accusing a man of blackmail with no proof? I'm not sure what I think of that. I'm not sure what I think of that. At least I know what I think of you. Hmm, good point. I'm not sure what I think of it myself. You claim the defendant entered the CEO's office, but you will need at least one witness to corroborate that claim, Mr. Wright. Nick, I think we're going to have to track the CEO guy. No, we don't have to track down the CEO at all. What do you mean by that, Mr. Trait? There is someone else who can testify. <laughs> This is the person who can testify that the key card was used, Larry. Take that. Who is this useless looking young man? You don't remember him, Your Honor? Hmm, not exactly. Just looking at his picture makes the bile start to rise in my throat. Looks like he doesn't remember the case from two years ago. Probably blocked out that memory on purpose. Anyway, this man was working as a guard at KB Security that night. Oh? The question at hand is this key card. Yep, that's the key card they use in the building I work. According to the serial number, this one is for the CEO's office. You need to get into that room and every time you use that card, it leaves a record. Yeah, it tells you exactly who entered the room and when. Hmm. As you can see, there's no need to investigate the CEO of KB Security. You should be able to discover the truth by analyzing this keycard's data. Did he just spit out the coffee? But it's blend 102 or 107. Well, Mr. Godot? The name of the CEO of KB Security is Kane Bullard. I was unable to con contact him directly, but got the keycard data here. So what does it show? 
Each key card has its own serial number and they leave detailed records of their use. According to this data, this card was used at 1 a.m. on the morning of the crime. That means it can't be Mr. Delight dressed as Master Mask in this photo. Ha. Looks like you're right. Two minutes isn't even enough to brew a good cup of joe. So, so then... Ron Delight was clearly in the office of KB Security's CEO at the time of the crime. The prosecutor's office is ready to admit that fact. Therefore, it's impossible for the defendant to be masked to mask. Really, Godot just admitted that right out the bat. Usually it takes us like having proof of the criminal to do that. Good job, you did it, Nick. That's enough. They came perilously close to besmirching the record of an innocent young man, besmirching him with the title of thief. Again. What's wrong, Your Honor? I'm ready to pass judgment, but before I do that, do you have any further objections? No, Your Honor. Hmm. Uh, very well. The court finds the defendant, Ron Delight. Not... There still has to be so much more to this case, I can feel it. Court is now adjourned. Like, there has to be more to this, right? Nick, you did it. You were right after all. Actually, I'm a little bit ashamed of myself. Nicky boy. Oh, Miss Delight. I knew you could do it. I believed in you all along, Nicky boy. I don't know how I can ever repay you. Aw, shucks. Thanks, Miss Delight. Congratulations, Mr. Nick. Oh, Pearls. Got a bad feeling about this. Gasp. Who is this woman? Oh, she, she's nobody. She's just, uh... You're blushing. How dare you do this in front of Mystic Maya? You should be ashamed of yourself. Youch, she slapped me. Um, Pearly? This woman is Miss Desiree Delight. She's our client's wife. Mr. Nick. Yes? You're even worse than I thought. Going behind the back of your own client? No, you got it all wrong. I'll never forgive you. Ow. Double slap. Well, anyway, all's well that ends well, right? You got the sacred urn back and the thief has been caught. You're so right, and it's all thanks to Nicky Boy here. It actually was you, Miss Delight, that brought us our urn back. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Oh, please. You're embarrassing me. We won the case. And why does this guy still look so glum? Ugh, but I am the thief. Ashley, what's the point now? What is it, honey? I did my best for you, Ronnie. I, I know that and I appreciate it, Desi. But the thing is... Come on, give the kid some time. He's just got a little touch of the blues. You know about feeling blue, right, amigo? Uh, Mr. Godot, what are you doing here? Oh, come on, I just came here to say thanks to my newest buddy. You, Mr. Trite. Well, maybe you should learn my name before you call me buddy. Well, playtime is over. Huh? Early this morning, the body of Kane Bullard was discovered. Whoa. Kane Bullard, where have I heard that name before? Isn't that the name of the CEO of KB Security? Wait, but body. The estimated time of death was 1 a.m. on October 12th. So if he was convicted of being masked to mask, he would be clear on murder. 1 a.m. on October 12th. You don't mean... That's right, amigo. At the same time that a cheap little urn was being stolen, the CEO of KB Security was being murdered. So then, what are you doing here? Oh, come on. You figured it out already, haven't you, amigo? Or have you already forgotten that piece of info I helped you out with today? Help me out? What? On October 12th, at 1 o'clock in the morning, Ron Delight was in the CEO's office, the scene of the murder. After getting that blackmail letter, he must have been imbrued with utter rage. W what are you saying? Imbrued with rage? Come on, don't tell me you didn't know. 
Rhonda Light was once an employee of KB Security. He was a professional security guard. An employee of KB Security. It looks like the alibi that saved him from being convicted as a thief is going to be the noose that gets him hanged. Kind of an anti-alibi. No way. He can't be the thief because he was at the murder scene when the murder occurred. No, that's a lie. It can't be true. Oh, oh, but, but I, I am a thief, I tell you. Round delight, you're going back to prison again. This time the charge is much more serious. This time you'll be tried for murder. What? This can't, this can't, this is impossible. I'm looking forward to another exciting showdown, Mr. Trite. You and I aren't through with each other yet. Surely you would, won't back down from a challenge. You've never been a coward. Mr. Nick, is there something personal between you two? I've returned from the depths of hell to do battle with you. At least let me have some fun while I'm here. This guy, who the heck is he? he may be quiet, but he's the most dangerous enemy I've ever faced. Well then, time to say goodbye to Mr. Delight. So... It's possible that at me faked this... Faked this particular theft while Delight was supposedly across town murdering someone. Great. So much. Nick, how could this be happening? Right in front of our very eyes, our client has been arrested for murder. And the one who established his presence at the scene was me. What in the world? Arrested for murder on the very same day he's declared innocent of larceny. What the heck's gonna happen next? We have to save him from a murder charge. Or can we even do that? Oh my gosh. So, this entire case started off one way, and now we're going somewhere completely different. So, I'm going to guess that tomorrow, quote unquote, the tomorrow, or would it be today in this case? I forget. But, um, we'll be investigating the murder instead of a crime. I'm still questioning if the urn had been fixed since it should say I am instead of Ami, which is still amazing that Pearl was able to spell I am, even. I mean, she could have also have put Maya and no one would have noticed, probably, because no one's noticed. But um, next time we'll have to solve a murder, I suppose. That's the only thing we can do. But I will see you guys later. Bye.